everybody and welcome back to Both Sides Book Club, our final episode of the year. Can you believe? Not at all. It has been such a wonderful year reading along with all of you guys, creating such an awesome book community. It has been the absolute highlight of both of our years. Yeah. Um, so thank you all very much for reading with us for your kindness, for your tolerance and your patience with us. Yep, your support. Um, every time you send us messages on Instagram or on Facebook or on YouTube, we just literally glow and get so excited. So thank you so much. Also wanted to send a huge thank you to all of the authors that have been on each of our episodes. Yeah. You've really brought together our community and... Um, really helped the backbone of both sides book club so thank you very much and also a big thank you to the publishers all to the the gorgeous publishers so um thank you from us thank you for publishing the authors thank you where you have given us advanced reading copies um, of some of the books that we've done this year and thank you also for facilitating um some giveaways and um and, and putting us in contact with various authors so yeah. um you rock thank you you rock <laughs> awesome <laughs> and um i think the biggest maybe we can just recap about one of the like the biggest highlight or something that we've each felt with book club i know for yeah. me i think the the coolest thing about this book club and what we've created is a safe space to talk about some topics that yeah um I probably wouldn't necessarily discuss or I probably wouldn't discuss with a bigger audience or even with you as my mum, like hmm. some really interesting, very mixed themes. I mean, we've yeah. spoken from all sorts of things, from love to misogyny to hmm. um, race, incest, gender, race. Yeah. Um, the yeah. list, list, list literally... Yeah goes on and um, I think that's been one of the cool things is just to unpack and to learn and to delve deeper into some topics that I probably wouldn't have done before yeah what, what for you was some of the highlights? um I think I think just the way the whole book club has evolved because when when you know we had the concept of of, of doing this and thought that oh yeah no nah, that would that that would be quite fun to do and let's just go with it and if nothing happens nothing happens and and um um at least you know we'll we'll be having fun doing it um to to the way it's just grown and grown and grown and the support that you have all given us so i mean believe me we've just been making it up as we go along <laughs> literally literally um so you know we didn't have a grand plan for it um and as you said uh, you know it just really soon became kind of a, apparent who we were talking to and and as you said it it really gave us permission to talk about things that we don't necessarily talk about mm. so um and also the other highlight is having read some fantastic books yes 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 mm. and probably a lot more admittedly than i normally <laughs> would read in a year uh, i was talking to my yeah my partner the other day and i was like gee whiz i feel like i've read a lot of books yeah so if anything for any of my um reading impaired friends like myself um join a book club because it really strengthens your skills because my gosh yeah. I read books now like never in my wildest dreams would I think that I would read a novel in my day in a day if you told me Katie you're gonna read a novel in a day I'd be like oh, you're joking like it takes mm. me four months to read a book yeah but now literally I'm reading a book a day like, yeah so not every day not every day gosh <laughs> no I wish I had the luxury of doing it but um yeah so Living proof, encouraging everybody, if you want to get better at reading, then just join a book club yeah. and read. Yeah, we had a lovely message um, actually the the other day from um, a reader who was just kind of picking and picking and choosing and dipping in and out of some of the books that um, we've done this year. Um, and she was actually just, she'd just finished one of the books and um, she was actually then going to go backwards and read our very first book mm. um there was love which i kind of I, I really liked that because it just nicely bookended the the 
the the year for me um so if any of you are, are out there and you and you haven't read any of the books or you've read some of the books um you know the content is there our discussions are there the books are available so you know just dip right on in and 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 mm. take your pick mm. Mm. um also, all of our picks make fantastic Christmas presents. <laughs> yes, they do indeed. Supporting our, like, <laughs> our authors. <laughs> so if any of y'all are looking for birth- uh, Christmas presents, then uh, yeah. you've come to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> um, that being said, so as you all know, we only did one book for December. So this episode... We hope you loved it. Yes, we hope I can, I can talk actually this week. So, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My voice is... I've got my voice back. My cold is gone. Woo-hoo, so holiday you won't be able season. to shut me up. And as you can see, we're very festive. We've got a cute Christmas tree. And those of you that are listening on podcast, just imagine beautiful Christmas trees everywhere. I'm feeling <laughs> very festive. Um, but the point being is that, you know, with Christmas around the corner, holiday season... Um, people's reading will start to slow down um, and then probably pick back up again during January and having time off. So We hope. We hope. (laughs) We're encouraging. So instead of having our two books um, a week, I mean one book, one book every two weeks, weeks, yes, um, I'm basically just going to give you six suggestions, three different genres of book types, um, is, that, is that the right way? Yeah. Book types? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Three different yeah. types of genres. Um, and just talk a little bit about them, tell you what's going on in the narrative. And um, if it sounds like you, give it a go over over summer. Um, yeah. yeah. One, of, one of the things that I, um, um, as many of you know, I used to um, I used to be a bookseller. And this time of year particularly was the time of year that people would always come in wanting recommendations, recommendations either for themselves or for the, or for their families mm. uh, to what for Christmas presents and what to actually read over the summer holiday. And many, many retailers, I guess, you know, come up with 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 summer reading guides um, with a pick of of books. But we we've, we've kind of taken it one step further in that we've already read the books um so we've handpicked six that um we think offer something fantastic um and um read some of them all of them yeah and we'll check back and we'll on our first episode back we will check in and discuss some of the things that we liked in each of, well, maybe all of them or one or two we haven't decided yet, but we'll be talking about the books that we are yeah. encouraging you all to read over summer. So let's dive on in. Okay. Um, I'm going to start. Okay. So, okay, change of pace. We have been reading some heavy books lately. Yes. So time for a laugh, time for a bit of sitting by the beach, sitting by the pool. Yeah. Aussie summer, not really thinking very much, which is actually what I need. Um, so this first book is, um, Ghosts, um, by Dolly Alderton. And this book is just funny. It is, um, lighthearted. It's about a girl called Nina who's in her twenties, who's living in London and she has a great network of friends and she is extremely, extremely, extremely single. Um, so basically the book follows a year in her life, um, where she has an interesting dynamic with her downstairs neighbor who she suspects might be a serial killer. (laughs) Um, (laughs) turns out she might've been wrong. Um, or maybe she was right. Or maybe she's right. I don't know. (laughs) Um, and she basically ends up meeting this guy called Max who um, she meets online and at first she's just like, oh my gosh, he's the perfect person. He's hilarious. We get Mm. along so, so well. Um, Their relationship starts to get really great. They're dating for three months. He says, I love you. And then all of a sudden he disappears, stops speaking to her, um, vanishes off the face of the earth. And she's just going, what the, like, this is just Mm. weird. What what am I doing? he then comes back into her life going, oh, I was an idiot. Don't like, give too much away. I missed you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and um, 
Anyways, it's about their sort of interesting relationship and um, just a funny, lighthearted read. So, but, it, but I think it's also, um, but it's also incredibly um, thought provoking in terms of just. It's not just funny, funny. It, you know, the, the I think the characters are great um, and the insights into. Um, into relationships and turning 30 um, and negotiating your way um, around friends and partners mm. and parents mm. is, is, is fantastic. I, yeah. la- I laughed all the way through it. So there you go. That's our first one, Ghosts. What have you got? Okay, so this one, this one's a slightly different one in that it is a, it is a, murder mystery story but it's a murder mystery story um if you like things like um Agatha Christie if you like Miss Marple or Hercule Poirot or if you like any kind of British sitcom type situational mystery type TV series. The author actually is a screenwriter in the UK and um, it's set in um, an old age people's home. So don't be put off. Um, A lot of the characters are in their 70s and 80s, but they are absolutely whip smart (laughs) and hilarious if you like if you liked the crown you'll love this it's got this that same kind of absolutely quintessential english humor um so there are basically four friends who are living in the nursing home and um they start um the thursday murder club so every thursday they um acquire a cold case from um a police friend of theirs and they try and work out who done it um, but things take a slightly different turn when people start getting murdered <laughs> and they have to work out who done it um, great for you don't be put off by the fact that they're old people um, because they're really really funny your mums and dads will love it as well um, really good beach read Brilliant. Okay, so that is Richard Osman, The Thursday Murder Club. Awesome. Um, Okay, now we're going for another sort of mystery. Um, This one is The Long Shadow by Anne Buster. 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 Mm. Um, Basically... Uh, this book is about um, this young family. Um, we've got Izzy and Dean, and they move into the middle of whoop whoop into into the outback. Dean works with um, like hospitals that are um, needing some extra love, um, sort of neglected hospitals, helping them get running back on their feet, and. Um, Izzy and Dean's relationship is very interesting. Um, there, a sort of a backstory into their relationship was that um, one night when their child was very, very young, um, Izzy was with some girlfriends, got drunk, and their baby fell into the pool. Um, Izzy kind of holds a lot of regret and guilt and um, fear associated with the incident and Dean kind of enables and lets her feel that way. The 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 child lived. lived. The little boy the little boy lived. lived, um, lived. Spoiler. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, I think, no, it's not a spoiler, otherwise people would be going like, oh my god, I can't okay, read okay. it. It's got a dead child. Oh, yeah, in no, it. that's yeah. true. Um so you know, their relationship is interesting and kind of a little bit damaged. Um but basically in this town there's this story that feeds the town of um, this young child that got abducted or taken. Yeah. Um, and basically there's this murderer that's still lurking in the town and sending these notes to all these different people saying, oh, the baby killer's coming back, blah, blah, blah. Like or you've got this sense of that, that there's still this this 
this mm. murderer out there that's after children. Um, Izzy receives a note, so she's feeling like it's it's after her. So she, it's basically her the story of her um, trying to solve and figure out who this person is. Mm. Um, so really good, interesting, mystery, thriller, sort of, yeah. again, not too heavy, sort of lighthearted, but very good. Yeah. 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 So that is The Long Shadow. So give that a go if you are interested in a mystery or a thriller. Mm-hmm. What we've got next. Okay. So my second pick is is Sally Hepworth's The Good Sister. Um, It's not exactly a thriller. It's more kind of a a family psychological drama, if you like. Another Australian author. Um, And this one, I think, is for anyone who likes kind of slightly quirky stories so if you like the rope <laughs> yes if you like the rosie project or if you liked um eleanor oliphant me <laughs> um the main character in this book um fern works at her local library she has and she likes things that happen in a certain order she has dinner three nights a week with her twin sister another twin lots of twins this year, Um, Rosie, um, and she doesn't really like to stray very far away from what she knows. Um, She discovers that Rosie um, and Rosie's husband have been desperate to have a baby, but Rosie is unable to do so. So Fern decides that she's going to have a baby for Rosie. Only problem is Fern's actually never even had a boyfriend. So how she's going to manage that, she's not too sure. Until the day that um, a guy comes into the library to have a shower because there are free facilities there. And she immediately thinks he looks like Wally out of Where's Where's Wally. So it's, it's, it's terrific. It's... Again, it's funny, it's complicated. The relationship between the sisters is bears a lot of looking at. It's not all it seems. Um, and Fern just goes from strength to strength uh, and ends up being the heroine in the book. So absolutely terrific. I loved it. Amazing. Okay, so that's Sally Hepworth, The Good Sister. Awesome. So, change of pace now, another um, genre. This one starts to get a little bit serious. So, for anybody wanting a little bit of meat during this summer reading, um, I would suggest this is where you sort of come Mm. to. Um, So, this is The Night Letters by Denise Leith. And this story um, is set in Afghanistan, in Kabul. And um, it follows the storyline of the, this main character called um, Sophia. And she is, um, she, she falls in love with this guy um, who was a doctor and he was with Doctors Without Borders. And she starts to get this fascination of helping out in countries with aid and trying to fulfill a purpose that's bigger mm. than her. Um, so she takes this job in Afghanistan and, um, is working with a whole bunch of patients and starts to discover that, um, so this is sort of set after, after the Taliban, but stuff, it's, it's still very, Afghanistan is still very unsettled. There's still a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's not at all, all peace and happiness. Um, And she starts to discover that young boys start to go missing. Um, And basically, these young boys have become playthings for um, men in higher power. So Mm. it's 
bit unsettling, um, but basically she wants to try and get to the bottom of it and figure out what's going on. Her life and her situation starts to become under great threat and it really starts to grip you. So I would suggest this book for anyone that wants a little bit more meat. Yeah. Um, also extremely, extremely brilliant. So this is The Night Letters by Denise Leith. Okay. So last but not least. Last but not least. So my final pick is Betty by Tiffany McNeil. Wow. Okay. This, again, I'm going to give you a warning with this one. If you're of a sensitive disposition, this probably isn't a book for you because there are parts of this that are very disturbing um, and mm, there's, there's, there's a fair bit of, of violence in, in the book. However, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I have to say, um, um, I got hold of a, a, this book earlier in the year and and, um, a, and kept putting off reading it. Um, and I finally read it about a month ago and I could not put it down. I just absolutely could not put it down. So it's basically the story Sounds of... Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> uh, I know. Look, it's basically, it's the story of a girl called Betty Carpenter. It's set um, in, in the shadow of the Appalachian Mountains in America. Um, it's set in the 1950s um, and Betty is the um, fifth of six children born to um, a Cherokee father and a white mother. Now they're dirt poor, they're absolutely dirt poor um, and Betty is the only one who takes after her father um, in temperament and in looks. All of the other children look like um, the mother. So Betty has a tough time of it at school. Um, as we know, children can be very unkind. Um, and there was still a huge amount of, of prejudice against um, American Indians at that time. So it's the story of their life together and, and the story of Betty's childhood. And um, it will make you cry, it will make you weep, but um, you won't be able to put it down. Amazing. Well, what a stack. Exciting times. Now, mum has another little sneaky thing up her sleeve. Um, just in the theme of giving and thinking about Christmas. If you would like to give a book to somebody and none of these quite tickled your fancy, um, Mum has yeah three other quick options. Okay, so another three quick options. We all love a good thriller, don't we? Yes. All of us can't put them down. Can't get can't yes. can't get enough of them. So um, if thrillers are absolutely your thing, or if you're buying for your partner or your uh, your husband and they love a good thriller. I've got three great Australian thrillers for you. So the first one is called The Hermit by S.R. White. And um, just very, very briefly, this all takes place. It's kind of a little bit like a psychological debriefing interrogation of a, a suspect, a hermit who's disappeared for 15 years. Um, and then is arrested standing over a dead body. He hasn't seen anyone or spoken to anyone in 15 years. And the police have got 24 hours to get him to talk. So that's a goodie. Yep. Amazing. Okay. Let's hold that Next one. Up again one for yeah. <laughs> the Survivors by Jane Harper. Now, many of you 
um, will know Jane Harper. This is now her fourth novel. Um, her first one, The Dry. Actually, I just saw this morning the movies coming out. Oh, on, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, on, I love The Dry. Um, yeah, on, on, on New Year's Eve. Lots so that's of, fantastic. And lots of, um, I have to say, lots of blokes love The Dry too. Absolutely. Well, yeah. this one, this fourth one is terrific. Set in a small town in Tasmania, it's the story of um, a guy who goes back to visit his parents in the small town where he comes from with his wife and his um, baby daughter. Something happened when he was 18 and um, somebody died and somebody went missing and this is the first time he's been back since then. So lots of red herrings, lots of clues you will not work out who the murderer is mm, right until the end. Cool. And, and the final one is Where the Truth Lies by Karina Kilmore. Again, another great Australian book. And this one is more, um, again, it's a thriller, but the main character is a journalist. We love a good journalist digging into the background. Um, and this one is set on um, the wharves. So basically, we have a battle between the unions and big, big, big business and the investigative journalist Chrissy basically wants to find out what's going on. So a grand, great, great holiday read. Amazing. Wow, what a stack. Hmm. Which one will you choose? Which one will you choose? <laughs> so everybody, as I said before, we won't be having any more episodes until next year. However, we will still be very active on social media. Absolutely. And if you and if you do get stuck into any of the books, then let us know. Let us know let where us you go. Yeah, mm. we are always on the gram. So send us a message, send us a DM. We love to chat books over this summer. So yeah. Happy reading, everybody. Now, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And we are about to go put our Christmas tree up. Absolutely. I hope mum bought us mince pies. Little brat, Katie. <laughs> All right, everybody. Okay, until next time. Happy Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Happy reading. Happy reading. We hope you enjoyed watching this episode. If you did, please leave us a comment below. We'll see you soon.